This is part 12 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to select values of checked checkboxes that are present in different groups. And along the way, we'll also discuss how to pass a variable to a jQuery selector. We will be working with the same example that we worked with in part 11. So please watch part 11 before proceeding with this video. Now, on this page, we have just one checkbox group, that is the skills checkbox group. And look at the selector we are using input type equals checkbox colon checked. So what is the selector going to do? It's going to return us all checkboxes that are checked. Since we have only one checkbox group on this page, this selector is going to work fine without issues. But what if we have two checkbox groups like this? Notice we have skills checkbox group and preferred cities checkbox group. And what is this selector going to do? This is going to give us all the checkboxes that are checked from both the groups irrespective of whichever button you click. But that's not what we want. When we click Get Selected Skills, we only want the checkboxes that are checked within the Skills group. Similarly, when we click Get Selected Cities button, we only want the checkboxes that are checked uh, and are in Cities group. So let's see how to achieve this. We will be modifying the example that we worked with in part 11. So please watch part 11 before proceeding. Let's flip to Visual Studio. So this is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. And at the moment, we only have the skills checkbox group. And to speed things up, I have already typed the required HTML to get you know the preferred cities checkbox group and two button elements. So look at the image here, we want preferred cities checkbox group and two buttons, get selected skills and get selected cities. And here is the HTML for that. So let's copy that. And instead of this button, the submit button here, I'm going to paste the HTML that we have copied. And if you look at this HTML, this is straightforward. We have three checkboxes and look at the name for these three checkboxes, it's cities. And for these skills checkboxes, it is skills. And then we have two break elements and then two button elements. Okay? Alright, so let's save these changes and let's reload. So we should get a UI that is similar to what we see on the slide here. Okay? Now, let's wire up click event handlers to these two buttons. Now, let's scroll all the way up. So here is our jQuery code and look at this. this uh, this jQuery code is from our previous example. At the moment, we have this BT and submit button to which the click event handler is wired up. Instead, we want to wire up a click event handler to these two buttons. Okay. Before that, let's actually encapsulate all this code, which we have written in the previous video session, into its own function. So I'm going to create a variable here. So let's name this get checked checkboxes and we want this to be a function. So I'm going to put all this code inside that function. Okay, so this is a function. So I'm going to cut this function. Okay, so we have the click event handler for that button. So outside of that click event handler, so this is the closing of the click event handler for this button. And this is the closing of the ready function. So the function that we have just created, I'm going to paste that here. So this is now present within the ready function. Okay, so now let's make a copy of this. Okay, and we have two different buttons. One is btn get selected skills and the other one is btn get selected cities. Those are the IDs. So let's wire up click even handlers to both of those buttons. So get the button by ID and then we are wiring up a click event handler. Let's do the same thing for the other button. BTN get selected cities. All right, so when we click the button, what we want to do, we want to call this function. The reason why we encapsulated this jQuery code into a separate function is because we're going to reuse this function uh, in both of these click event handlers. So that's the reason we encapsulated it. So let's call this function within the click event handler of both the button controls. All right, so let's save those changes. And if you look at this function, look at the selector, 
input type equals checkbox colon checked. So what is this going to do? This is going to select all the checkboxes that are checked you know, um, from both the groups. Okay. So let's quickly look at that in action. Let's reload this page and from the skills group let's select JavaScript and jQuery and from cities New Delhi and London look at that when I click collect, uh, get selected skills it says four checkboxes checked and it gets all the checkboxes from both the groups you know whatever is checked okay now look at this when I click get selected cities I get the same thing again okay and that's not what we want when we click get selected skills we only want the checkboxes from the skills group that are checked and the same uh, for get selected cities get me the checked checkboxes from the preferred cities group so let's see how to do that so why do we have that problem at the moment at the moment we have that problem because we're using type attribute here so if you look at these checkboxes all of them are of type checkbox now instead of using type attribute why can't we use the name attribute because name attribute is different for the checkboxes that are present in skills group and it's cities for the checkboxes that are present in cities group so what I'm going to do here is use the name attribute so input name equals skills okay but we can't hard code it like this what's the problem if we hard code it like this the problem is irrespective of whichever button you click it's always going to give you the checkboxes that are checked and present in skills group and that's not what we want so we want this to be a variable so we want to pass a variable to this selector okay so to this function I'm going to pass a variable let's name it group name and then instead of hard coding the group name like this what I'm going to do is pass that variable in so this is the selector beginning so I'm going to terminate that with another single quote and then instead of this hard-coded skills name we are going to use that group name and then concatenate that with the rest of the selector string okay so now this function has got a parameter so we need to pass a value for that parameter when we call that function so when we click get selected cities button the group name is going to be cities and when we click this get selected skills the group name is going to be skills alright so let's save those changes reload the page and let's select jQuery and VB New York and London so get selected skills look at that we only get the checkboxes that are checked and present in skills group and when we click get selected cities um, you know two checkboxes checked New York and London only the checkboxes from the preferred cities group okay now we only have one div element to display the result that's why it's overwriting but if you have two div elements you know you can display them separately in fact let's do that so at the moment here we have one div element let's include another div element and let's actually put a break in between those two and let's name this first div div skills and the second one div cities and look at the names both of them are prefixed with div and this rest of the name skills that matches with the group name and the same is this one um, cities matches with the second group and I have done that intentionally because we can make use of that group name here so here at the moment the div ID is div result but we don't have that div anymore instead what I'm going to do is use the variable name that is coming into this function that's the group name and then we are going to concatenate that with this word div so if the group is skills the div is going to be div skills if the group name is cities then the div is going to be div cities and then we are setting the HTML on that so the same for this one alright so let's save those changes and let's reload this page JavaScript C sharp New York New Delhi and get selected skills so two checkboxes checked and get selected cities two checkboxes checked and we get the selected cities 
All right. So at the moment, we are relying on these buttons, you know, uh, to actually get the selected checkboxes. Now, instead, why don't we do that as soon as the click event happens on the checkbox? For example, when I click on jQuery checkbox, it should automatically say three checkboxes checked, and then it should list all the three checkboxes. So let's see how to achieve that. Now, to achieve that, all you have to do is wire up the click event handler to all the checkboxes, just like how we did it for the button controls right so here we are getting the button by ID and then associating a click event handler to that instead why don't we get you know all the checkboxes from the skills group and then associate a click event handler to them okay and how to get the checkboxes all the checkboxes from skills group use input type equals I mean input name equals skills selector so instead of the ID selector here I'm actually going to use input where name equals skills. So this is going to give us all the checkboxes from the skills group and to those checkboxes we are uh, wiring up a click event handler and let's do the same thing for the checkboxes that are present in cities group. So here the group name is going to be cities All right so let's save these changes and we don't need these buttons anymore so let's get rid of these buttons let's save the HTML reload the page so we don't have the buttons anymore so now when I select the checkboxes look at that and similarly when we select the cities and when we uncheck you know everything happens on a click on the checkbox and here is the HTML for the first example the jQuery code HTML for the second example and the jQuery code for the second example thank you for listening and have a great day